Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Zero Project Fireside. It's the second day of the, of the conference. We are having an, an amazing crowd here, as, uh, as usual. And I have the immense pleasure uh, to have, an, unfortunately, only an online interview with, uh, with Deborah Rue. It's really a pity uh, that you cannot be with us, uh, but uh, we totally understand uh, your reasons. It's good to see you. Hi, Deborah. Hello, and I, I hate that I can't be there in person too. My um, my daughter Sarah, who has Down syndrome, um, she's just dealing with a lot of pain right now. So the doctors are working with me, and um, and actually the good news is she's feeling a little bit better. So um, that's fantastic. But I'm sad I can't be there in person. That's good to hear, Deborah. We know each other for for several years, and you are one of the of the leading activists in the in the, in the field uh, maybe let's talk a little bit about uh, about numbers about you know let's say uh, the disability community please elaborate a little bit well, the community, we are a very large community, and a lot of that is because of the legislations and the way it has been defined if you have a disability. And sadly, disability definitions are different. We have a different disability definition under the Americans with Disabilities Act as opposed to looking at the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Uh, but regardless of what definition you look at, we are at least a billion strong. And so I think it's really time that the grass movement's efforts of bringing our billion strong community together to really support each other, um, champion the employers that are trying to include us, getting behind um, efforts like Zero Project. I think that um, it's very obvious there's never been a more important time than taking all of those numbers and bringing us together. But at the same time, something else to consider is we are aging. All of our societies are aging dramatically. And so as we age, I know according to the American Association of Persons with Dis excuse me, with for retired persons, AARP, 67% of their members have disabilities. So we have people joining our community every single day. Thank you, Deborah. And just to do a little bit of the, of the math, the billion uh, is 15% of the, of the world population, which, which makes it a billion persons with, uh, with disabilities uh, around the globe. Uh, you mentioned legislation. I know you have the, the ADA since more than 30 years. Uh, the European community in introduced the first piece of legislation in the 2000s, and, uh, and next year we're looking forward to the European Accessibility Act, which is basically uh, another extension to it to, uh, to certain products, above all digital uh, products like TVs, like uh, all of the smartphone communications, which is also a very uh, Im Im important step. How do you see and what's the obstacle between, let's say, the law and the real implementation? Well, I think we have a lot of laws, and I think it's great that more legislation is being put in place and that we're seeing a lot of, for example, leadership in countries like the EU, Canada, and others. But the reality is we have a lot of laws in place that are not being followed right now. And so a lot of the technology, the digital, the artificial intelligence, even the built barriers, the built barriers that we're seeing in the environments, um, these laws do not seem to be leading to real change for our community. And there's a lot of efforts being made all over the world to make sure that we are fully included and yet we ha are being excluded like never seen before. We are still not being fully included in the employment realm. We still don't even know who we are as a community. Um, they, there's infighting between the communities. So I think it's really important in that we take almost a step back and say, and first of all, appreciate and applaud the laws that are being created for us to make sure we're included. But I think we got to do a better job of the community actually coming together and really supporting each other. We're over a billion strong. If we could actually employ each other, come out and own our own lived experiences with disabilities, be proud of our lived experiences, be proud of our loved ones that have these amazing skills because they're humans that might have lived experiences with disabilities. But I just don't think that the legislation is going to is going to solve the problems. I don't think actually the corporations are going to solve the problems. I think the community has together has to really come together in a more meaningful way, a more inclusive way. We need to support the groups that are actually supporting us, like Zero Project, which is one reason why I always stand behind what you are doing. But we need to be more discerning about who is including us and who isn't. But we have to include ourselves. 
Deborah, I'm sure uh, as an as an activist for so many years, uh, you you have a roadmap. So how how can we achieve this uh, uh, to overcome this challenge between, let's say, uh, the legislation in theory, uh, but uh, that we really reach the community who needs it most? What's uh, what's your roadmap? What's the strategy? Well, I think the roadmap is once again we need the legislation. We need everything that's happening, but. For us to think that society is going to change because we have laws, uh, I think we can look at a long, long history of how that has not worked. So my strategy has always been, when I, I was very proud to be one of the leaders that helped Dr. Caroline Casey get uh, corporations to the, five, the valuable 500. Why did I do that? Well, I thought, my gosh, if corporations understand the value of truly including us, this is a win for all of us. And it is, but at the same time, I think what we've done with a lot of these business to business organizations, the Valuable 500, Business Disability Forum, Disability, and there's other amazing ones, we are sort of asking them to make sure the corporations change society. When actually we, as the human beings, as the individuals, we're the ones that need to change society. So what my game plan is that we come together and we convene. I've done it by using a hashtag, we are billion strong. And I'm amazed at the thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are joining us every day because a lot of us in the disability community are not really feeling heard. We're just really not feeling hurt. And we don't, we see a lot of activities. We see trillions of dollars are spent on making sure that humans are included. I mean, if you think about our healthcare, our education, and yet it doesn't get to the people that actually need it. We are still seeing record unemployment rates, uh, people with disabilities not in education. Once again, very, very grateful and thankful for Zero Project because you're actually helping us solve these problems. But we're seeing a lot of organizations that are supposed to be supporting people with disabilities not doing that. So um, part of the game plan is making sure that more of us people come together to support each other and to also help other organizations maybe that aren't as being as effective at including us to make sure that they're including us as well. So I think the game, game plan has to be something that I think you are doing a good job at at Zero Project. We have to collaborate. Deborah, this year our topic is education and uh, and ICT, and as you know, we have subtopics in in defining and, and breaking down this this big subject. So it's from early childhood intervention until u university uh, or vocational training uh, and uh, and education. You mentioned before uh, that basically age also implies almost immediately or at least two thirds. Uh, to a disability, where is basically the the strategy for the for the education? Is is billion strong uh, also active? Let's say in the student sector, uh, in the schools. How does this work? And that is a really really great question. Thank you so much. Education is critical, and it always has been. We have not prioritized education as a world, I believe. Certainly my country, my beautiful country in the United States, I think we could do a much better job of supporting um, education across the board. But I, I know the education that my daughter, born with Down syndrome, experienced in the United States. I know the realities of what's happening in education, as many of us do. And um, I know how talented our educators are, but they are not being given the support they need to really meaningfully educate us. And so, it, and we see that disconnect when we get and try to move into the workforce. And so I think what we need to do is we need to use these times to really change the way the world is working. We need to use the times of artificial intelligence. Now, what I want, we all want, hopefully, artificial intelligence that is not biased, unconsciously or consciously biased. We all want AI for good, AI for all. What I don't want is we don't want to, uh, you know, gamify loneliness or think that you can just give me a piece of technology and I'm magically healed. We don't want that or gamifying mental health. But we could use these technologies in a way, a very powerful way that could really support our educators, support the way our ch children learn, appreciate that children are different learners. We know so much data now, and we could use the technology and the artificial intelligence together to support our teachers and support our school systems and our educators. 
Um, we also need to come together more. We need to listen to our OTs, our PTs, our, our speech therapists, our different therapists. We need to allow more of the educators to come into these conversations because often we see large amounts of the stakeholders being left out of the conversations and we're seeing the results of not having the needs met because, met because of that. Deborah, we are basically, we left a, a pandemic uh, behind us, which was really uh, a disruptive force for, for, for many of us, which led you know, to a lot of, of negative uh, things, but a lot of positive things. I think, uh, you know, MS Teams calls or, or Zoom calls are not just now uh, our daily life. What was the impact also on, on people with disabilities during uh, that period and what was the learning after it? Well, I think the thing that was exciting about what we learned during um, COVID, certainly at the beginning and then as we went all the way through it, was that um, this is what we've been talking about. This is what we meant when we said people with disabilities are isolated, we're not being included. Everyone really got to experience what it meant to be isolated and not included. It's a very, can be a very hard experience. I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, there was estimates that 65% of the American population would have post-traumatic stress disorder after we had walked this with COVID. Well, I, I think those numbers are pretty accurate. The, some of the data that we see, for example, in 2023, that was the largest number of suicides in the United States, just looking at one country, since we've started keeping track of this. People are really, really in very, very unhealthy, scary places. And so I think what we have to do is we have to learn. We learned a lot, like you said. We know that we can Zoom. People can actually work from anywhere. And so I think we learned a lot, but it feels also like what we're starting to do is unlearn those lessons. I see employers uh, demanding that people come back to the office, whether or not it makes any sense for the position. I see employers stretching their, you know, their big muscles and saying, we're gonna lay you off now. Okay, okay, but we actually, as a community, we are watching in a way that has never been watched before. So I know that the, you know, a lot of these leaders, these big leaders that think that they can just keep excluding us with no consequences. I think they're going to be surprised at what happens in society. We're seeing it happen right now, the reveals. The, we're seeing, you know, institutions break down. We're seeing it happen right now. But I think I hope that we can continue to learn the lessons, the valuable lessons we learned during the COVID times. Technology was a blessing during those times. It helped. I, I mentioned on Access Chat the other day that if, it, if we didn't have Amazon in the United States, once again, just looking at my lens, it would have been much more difficult for us to stay away from each other. So, and I'm not saying Amazon's the answer. I'm just saying that technology can really help us make sure that we improve the lives of everybody and keep us safe especially during times like that. Deborah, you are an ambassador of the, of the Zero Project and, uh, and you have excellent contacts also where, which we benefit from uh, to the corporate world. How do you see, is there, you know, is there a, a change in sight or what's, uh, what's the corporate, what are corporations uh, thinking about person with disability, of course, with the background of the employment topic? Well, I um, I think that there's a mix of that. I see some corporations that are really, really very committed to us, but I see a troubling amount of people, uh, corporations backing off of the commitments that they've made to us. Um, so, and we see um, our population being, you know, targeted for more layoffs than others. We see people of a certain age, age being targeted. So, um, I think that it's going to be really tough times. And I, but I also think what I'm seeing from the corporations that I believe are leading, um, they are looking at this as an also as an opportunity because they're going to have to. Everybody's going to have to do things differently. That's just the realities of our time. But I think more corporations. This is why I'm always in court encouraging corporations to attend the Zero Project. I want you corporations to understand who our community is. One way you can do that is by going to a conference like Zero Project with all the different projects happening. And so I think that you're going to find that a lot of these employers, at least the ones that I'm watching, the big brands and the engaging with, 
they're getting more discerning about how they're going to spend their money and what they're going to do to include us. They want to get more clever. They under, they're starting to understand technology isn't the only answer, but let's take technology and start collaborating and figuring out ways that we can do these things better. So it's I see it on both ends. I see some corporations doing a wonderful job, but there's quite a few that are starting to say things like, oh, this woke stuff and and we're watching as a community and that's one reason why we're also gathering we are billion strong and we the only way that we can support the real change and real inclusion is if we come together so as as these times dictate that we have to pay attention in a different way I would say to the corporations, I need to encourage all of the corporate brands to get more involved with our community, which means I want to see you at Zero Project. I want to see what you're doing. I know that Indeed, just give a little shout out for them, they're at Zero Project this year. Really like to see new corporate uh, corporations coming and engaging with our community. Um, but we're seeing corporations actually pull back as well, and we're noticing that as well. Just as a, as a community, we're noticing it. Thank you so much, Deborah. We could, we could, could go on for hours, uh, as you know, but it was a great uh, call to action because our, our next year's topic is employment. Uh, and, uh, and let's hope some of the, of the guys and, uh, and people out there are listening. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, stay well and uh, hope we see each other soon. Uh, this was a fireside talk with Deborah Rue, uh, the initiator of a Billion Strong, a very important disability movement. And uh, you're watching Fireside Chats from the Zero Project Conference 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Bye-bye.